Welcome, folks. This is the Tom O'Brien Show, and I am Jacob, filling in for Tom. He'll be back Monday. Everything today is red. We have the DIA down, NDX, the Q's down, gold is down. The thing we have up right now is the dollar. And so we're just past that 102 mark. Um, move it on here real quick. So we'll see if we can get back up to this 105 area and see if 106 in play for the dollar. Um, but uh, this guy has been rallying quite a bit. It's been pushing up. It's been having this real tough resistance since uh, about March, end of March, beginning of April, getting over that 102 hump. It did today. Nice big bar up. Um, so we'll see what happens. Obviously, uh, Tom was talking about it on Twitter today. Someone asked a question um, with the DX... With the dollar running higher, what does that mean for us in the market? Particularly gold. So usually these guys have an inverse relationship. Um, so we might see a quick retrace of gold down to some level. Um, the GDX obviously is down 0.22% right now. Um, but we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see what the dollar does. Uh, today, um, one of the things I wanted to talk about, the thing that is not red, is first solar. So First Solar makes uh, solar panels, essentially, and they just uh, acquired a company called Eveler AB, which is a Swedish company. They uh, make the film that goes over uh, solar panels. So this has been huge. Uh, as you can see, this, this jumped up 25% just today. Uh, we were trading at, what, like around 180 before this news came out. Um, obviously, huge jump. You can see it kind of retested this level um, the last day with volume from March 1st. Uh, just briefly dipped under it, and then we came back up. Um, obviously, this major volume was on uh, some news that's outside of the technical with it. But um, you can see it did retest that level last day with volume, and it crept up. And it did that as well on the day. Okay. Still there? I can, my mouse is no longer working. Hmm. There we go. I love that. Anyways, if we look, if we go to a yearly on it, had the next, let's see. It tested this level again right here. Uh, broke down briefly and then popped back up, this time with no volume. So we could probably assume that's in some way what it was going to do prior to this news. But anyways, this got big. I think the calls on it right now are like at 12.50, um, expiring next week, which is pretty massive. Uh, so the market still sees an upside in this stock, even though it just busted through 25%, obviously busted through massive resistance. Um, so give a little bit more on it. Uh, clear resistance around 220 and regained its 50-day moving average uh, since April. The stock far extended from uh, prior breakout uh, past the buy point of 185.38. Um, it was the best performer, obviously, in the SPX today. Uh, pretty, pretty intense. Um, it's on track for its highest close since September 19, 2008. Um, and then really, solar stock in general has popped up today on this news. We look at Ray. Uh, let's see here. Ray's up 15%. This kind of is what happens, right? Like, you get a big bust out in the market with one company and the whole, the rest, everyone wants to get exposure. Maybe they don't want it in that stock. I mean, is that, is that really like a long-term thing? Ray hasn't done anything differently. And I'm currently, and I looked, I'm currently not aware of anything larger in the solar market that would drive a, uh, like a, a sector-wide increase like this. Uh, we can look at Next Tracker as well, NXT. That popped up again pretty similarly, 10%. And then we have Shoals. And that was up 4%, modestly at least. But these are kind of the big ones, at least in solar. If you're looking for any kind of exposure in solar, I would take a look at these. Again, that's Array, which is A-R-R-Y, Next Tracker, NXT, and then Shoal Technologies. Um, but we'll see if that lasts, at least in the market as a whole. I'm, I'm sure for solar, we'll probably still have a little bit to go up. Um, but again, if we look at kind of what it tends to do, which again, of course, past performance isn't indicative of a uh, future performance, but um, still, we might see... Uh, a little retrace in there sometime next week. Interesting nonetheless. Another big news story we have is Tesla. They're having a recall of 1.1 million of, uh, of their vehicles in China. Uh, there was something to do with brakes. 
uh, they weren't they weren't working properly. And this is this has been an issue actually, even in America for quite a while. It just it seemed like it wasn't uh, so spread across the uh, or excuse me, it wasn't so like uh, I guess specified in just a batch like it was in China, right? I mean, you had stories of um, people in California getting pinned against walls because of the breaks. Um, obviously, in China, they've found this out, I think, before anything too intense happened. Everyone's like, okay, is this negative for the stock? Obviously, this, this stock is pretty sensitive to news, I feel like. And what I mean like that is you'll get a small sell-off, right? I think people look for reasons to try to play with this thing. But then it does kind of tend to rebound again, and you, and you get its power. Um, I think... What's interesting is the way that they're going to deal with this recall is they're going to do over-the-air software fix, which is, in my opinion, if that goes flawlessly, is actually a major bonus for Tesla to show that they can actually do this um, and nothing insane needs to happen. And maybe in the future, uh, the, the vehicles themselves don't even need to be fully recalled if the issue um, you know, isn't something so intense as, as brakes. Um, so the cars started notifying drivers when they pressed the accelerator for an extended period. Um, Tesla sold 1.13 million cars in China from 2014 through March 2023. Um, the acceleration issue has been a constant issue, but they've been able to kind of fix it a little bit, again, with these over-the-air updates, which I think for everything that you can criticize, this kind of hyper-connectivity of the world and everything being online and the Internet of Things and so on, that is a, that is a pretty cool uh, component, right? Like, you can just get an update on your car. Um, again, there's implications to that in general, but I think that's kind of a neat thing. Um, what's interesting, at least in the production in China, uh, they have an EV factory in Shanghai, and uh, that has produced 711,000 cars just last year alone. And so that's more than half of the output that they have worldwide, and it just shows you how, in I think, you know, obviously big Tesla um, exposure is in China. Um, and I think if they nail this properly and it doesn't affect the Chinese buyer too much, this, uh, this recall, um, I think this, they're, they're poised for uh, another increase. We'll get back a little bit too. He's leaving uh, the CEO position of Twitter. And in my opinion, I think that's also another positive thing for Tesla as well. Folks, stay tuned. We will be right back.